Today is an exciting day. Starship is one static fire away from soaring to 15 clicks and back. We'll start off with that story. Then debrief this week's 14th Starlink mission and go over other Starlink news. Check in on Crew Dragon status and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Man, the times we live in. Since you're here watching this video, let me first start off by congratulating you. You had the situational awareness and good judgment to immerse yourself in the world of SpaceX. And my friends, you are about to be rewarded for your patience. On Monday morning, engineers in Boca Chica, Texas, executed a spin-up of Starship SN8's Raptor engine pre-burners, bringing the suborbital spacecraft alive for the very first time. Later that day, and a couple miles up Highway 4, SN8's nose cone was lifted up and placed on its lower half. Elon shared a picture of the silver bullet outside of the bay for all of us informed and crazed addicts to enjoy. That night, another pre-burner spin-up was performed, but then hours later, her three Raptor engines were let loose for a full-blown boom time. It was the first time more than one Raptor engine had fired at once. When the smoke cleared, everything looked perfectly nerminal, very clean. No lingering fires to try to put out and then unintentionally make worse like the early days of Starhopper. SpaceX certainly has leveled up over the past year or so. Data from three engine Starship static fire this morning looks good. Proceeding with nose cone, mate. Roger that. You are go for nose cone, mate. So the nose cone was moved down to Highway 4 on Wednesday to rendezvous with the rest of its body. And boy, I'll tell you, what this road needs is a couple speed bumps. That would teach you damn kids to rocket through our neighborhood. Stop. <laughs> Yesterday morning, the nose cone's cold gas thrusters were tested. <laughs> Silly poofs. Some venting was spotted as well, so I'm not sure if the header tank was pressurized or not. And then later in the day, two Raptors were spotted making their way from the launch site where SN8 sits. I'm not sure yet what that's all about. Elon did tweet a while back that they will perform some checkouts to make sure everything, again, is nominal before moving on to the next pre-flight step. So maybe the vets are currently giving those Raptors a physical. But a symbolic event did take place yesterday evening, one that many of us have been waiting years to see. SN8's face was lifted and placed upon the rocket's body, and for the first time in history, completing the entire build of a flight-ready starship. She's a real beaut, Clark. Of course, if she's missing engines, she's not exactly complete, but gosh dang it, don't ruin this moment for me. Before this beast gets off the ground and flies 15 clicks, first it must pass one more major hurdle, a second static fire. This time presumably by drawing from the propellant and its header tanks that will be used for the landing burns. No dates are currently on the books for that yet. Current Raptors strapped to Starship SN5, 6, and 8 could go 300 bar, but would be dicey. Pushing it for near-term tests doesn't achieve anything, but I'm confident Raptor will do 300 bar for orbital flights. Newer Raptors have run for 90 seconds at 300 bar chamber pressure before encountering issues. 210 megatons of force at sea level operating thrust seems achievable with no major changes. Raptor boost variant is aiming for 300 tons of thrust at 300 bar with same nozzle exit area. We'll need bigger pumps. God, I love Elon's dirty talk. Oh, behave. <laughs> Still no word yet on a date for his Starship presentation either. It was supposed to happen this month, but Elon's so busy it seems it may have slipped his mind. Or maybe he's been having too many drinks. He tweeted a pic the other day of his tiki drink while taking a break down there in Boca. Why is the rum always gone? Oh. And now says he wants to build a star bar on the roof of the new high bay. But this wouldn't happen until after the presentation. However, a tent has been set up down at the launch site. That could be for the presentation. I know last year at the construction site, they had to keep us contained so we wouldn't start snooping around because, you know, we're nosy nerds. To be clear, this is just conjecture. I don't even know what's going on in my own life half the time. Why would I know what's going on a thousand miles away? But I am pretty confident that a nose cone was painted white this week for the presentation. It's kind of obvious that it's a mock-up for the Moonship Lander, the Starship variant for NASA's Artemis program. And finally, a quick update on other Starship serial numbers, as well as the first Super Heavy booster as they continue their sprouting. This diagram is brought to you by Brendan2908 on Twitter. You can get these images earlier by supporting him on Patreon. Link in the description. A couple new updates to point out. First, SN10's parts are now stacked on top of one another. So, so we'll just use some black magic to, to move these pieces through a higher dimension and put them right here. 
Now that SN9 has a happy little twin friend, let's take a look at SN11. Its lower locks tank bulkhead is now stacked on top of its skirt and was gifted an upper methane tank bulkhead that's standing by. There, that's better. Now take that brush and beat the devil out of it. Now let's move on and debrief this week's Starlink mission. On Sunday, SpaceX launched their 14th flock of Starlink satellites from Cape Kennedy. This was only the second time a Falcon 9 booster has flown for a sixth time. And it will get the opportunity to go for a seventh because it made a near perfect landing on the drone ship, of course I still love you. The fairing was also of the reused variety and both halves were caught in the nets of mystery and mischief, but one net broke upon impact, sending the fairing half into the support beam. No word yet if it suffered any damage, this was only the second time both halves and a booster were caught during a single mission. And yes, of course, all 60 satellites were successfully deployed into low Earth orbit. On Wednesday, Greg Scott was at the port to capture the booster's return. She came back very sooty. But hey, you'd be a dirty girl too if you'd been around the block more than a handful of times. Check out more of his shots on his Twitter page, link in the description. There was supposed to be another Starlink launch yesterday, but it was scrubbed about 10 minutes before liftoff to allow additional time for mission assurance work. Just a small issue with the loss of the upper stage camera. Probably nothing serious, but standing down to re-examine the whole vehicle just in case. Yep, those GoPro suction cups are pretty garbage. In other Starlink news, SpaceX has partnered with Microsoft for their Azure Cloud Computing Network. The Starlink constellation will connect to modular data centers, granting access to customers who need cloud computing capabilities in a hybrid or challenging environment. Microsoft will also be subcontracting with SpaceX for their missile tracking contract with the military we had just discussed a couple weeks ago. And finally, Kathy Luters, NASA's Associate Administrator of Human Exploration and Operations, updated us on the status of Crew-1 and the technical difficulties SpaceX is working through with their new Falcon 9 boosters. Quote, we are making a lot of good progress with SpaceX engine testing to better understand the unexpected behavior observed during a recent no NASA launch. It's too early to report findings at this point as SpaceX continues testing to validate what's believed to be the most credible cause. And based on our current analysis, SpaceX is replacing one Merlin engine on the Sentinel-6 launch vehicle. That's the one that will launch from Vandenberg here pretty soon and one engine for the Crew-1 rocket that displayed similar early start behavior during testing. We are still targeting the Sentinel-6 launch for November 10th from Vandenberg Air Force Base, as we expect to complete forward work in time. We are also still working toward a mid-November launch for Crew-1. We will want a few days between Sentinel-6 and Crew-1 to complete data reviews and check performance. And most importantly, we will fly our missions when we're gosh darn good and ready. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> On Tuesday, NASA got their rocks off by landing their first probe on an asteroid. The name of their mechanical mosquito-looking thing is OSIRIS-REx. It launched back in August of 2018 and rendezvoused with the floaty space boulder, Bennu, a few months later in December. Since then, it's been orbiting the rock, surveying and mapping it out, analyzing the best ways and locations to make a brief touchdown to collect a sample of its surface. And that's what it did. Using its stinger-looking thingy, it approached slowly, booped the asteroid, fired five seconds worth of nitrogen gas just to make a mess, and bottled as much debris as it could before backing off slowly. It will take a couple days to verify the quantity collected, but its return capsule is expected to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and land under parachutes in September of 2023. Gosh, it'd be so cool to work on an engineering project like that, but man, that's a long time to wait to open your presents. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but I'd like to thank my eccentric members and patrons for their monetary support of the channel. It's because of their generosity that I get to spend these Friday nights with you instead of the lawyer wife. If you'd like more SpaceX news in your week and other space videos and live launches, check out the description below and join up with us today. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX contributors. Have a normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.